This is when I get nervous. When we need to fade from a, a start screen to a game. This is when we seem to get all the crashes. But we'll get through it. How's everybody doing? Welcome to the stream. It's Friday the 13th. How's Friday the 13th treating your mind? So far, so good. All right, here we go. <laughs> so far, so good. Let's see how we do here. Ready? And is it going to hold on to the game? I think it is. Yep. All right. Game seems stable. OBS seems stable. Stream seems stable. All right. Everything's going good. So we'll turn this off. I might turn that back on later. It's a Friday. Maybe we'll, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we'll let little, little music roll. All right. So this is field 16. The game did patch up, so we might see a little bit of stutter while we load textures. That's a dirty boy. I mean, you're talking about the tractor, right? Yeah. You know what? There's a power washer up at the up at the farm. We'll take care of it. Jaden, how you doing? Welcome. Yep, there's a power washer, so we can take care of that. Uh, what is going on? First things first, the game did patch up, and they've added a few things. One thing they added is the ability to turn off track IR when you're out of a vehicle. That is fantastic. So right now, we're only controlling our look with the right stick, right? And when we get in the tractor then we'll have track IR. So that is a nice quality of life feature. They also added um, diff lock. So we have diff lock when we're in fields now, if we get stuck in the mud. They also added a different suspension response based on the condition of the field. So a plowed field, a cultivated field, a, a planted field will all treat the suspension differently. I guess you'll bounce a little bit differently. And they also added uh, air ride suspension to the seat so that's very cool. And what else? Uh, bug fixes. Quality of life stuff. So that is all very cool. Let's get this thing up to the farm. And we'll be able to see how this all looks when we get inside here. So first things first. We'll get this closed. Right there. We'll get that closed. And if we go... Um, let me see. We want to go here. Yep. Right there. Diff lock. Fantastic. All right. We don't need that right now, but we'll see how that works. And then the other thing we'll see about is how we bounce on the way up to the farm. Bounce with me. Here we go. All right. And we'll have to look in the menu as well to see if there's a place we can turn that on or off. Or if that's, you know what I mean? If that's just the way it is. Frame rate is a little, oh, a little iffy right now. Right, what else did I find out? Okay, so I had a question off camera between the previous stream and then the one before that. Off camera, I experimented with cultivators. Yeah, there's a little bit of bounce. All right, I'll take it. I experimented a little bit with plows, cultivators, disc harrows, power harrows. They're all different. I don't want to, like, lump all that together. Forget my agricultural terminology. All right, and this is new as well. We do have gear stick movement and the clutch moves now too. So let's set the brake and before I forget, put the windows up, right? Because we are going to clean this thing. I heard you. Can't have a dirty tractor. Uh, and the other one is right there. All right, and then we want to, let's go third person for this. And get turned around. I did notice there's no dirt whatsoever on the implement. It's a work in progress. <laughs> They're sorting all this stuff out. This is a little different than Farming Simulator. What we do here is we just pull into here, set the brake, and then like so. As if by magic. All right. I'll take it. So let's get back up here. So I experimented with the plow, the disc harrow, the cultivator, and the power harrow, and none of them seem to change that. Uh, well, we'll go look at it right now. Let me get this thing stopped. If we go here, no. If we go here, <laughs> I'll remember all this. I'm still fat fingered from playing several years of farm sim. Right. 
we can use this one as an example. Right down here, loosening, deep loosening, right? None of these values seem to change regardless of what we do. Oh, surface wetness. This might be new. I think this could be a new thing. But these values here, loosening and deep loosening, I think this is fixed at the moment. I think this will be added to the game later because there's nothing we can do to make anything happen with these. It doesn't matter what implement we use. I used every implement that could possibly have influenced that, and I didn't see any difference with it at all. So maybe they'll add a ripper or a subsoiler later, but at the moment, that's, that's all we got. Oh, there goes my voice. I don't know if I'm going to make it for a full stream, but you know what? We'll go as long as we can. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pull this thing in. We're going to drop the Lemkin. Then we're going to go in the house and sleep for, I think I want to sleep for 10 days. Because it says this spring barley will take 100 days. Oh, you know what? Not here. Uh, other side. It says it will take 100 days for it to be, uh, is it BCCP? BCC something but 100 days before we can harvest it so i'm going to go 10 days i'm going to sleep for 10 days and then when when we wake up we'll see what kind of fertilizer it needs let's get this pulled in here i think this is the most time i've spent third person since we started streaming all right and you know i still haven't figured out if you have let me know but i still have not figured out how to select what what it is that you want to drop. There we go. Very tight. Alright, so if we go in, we're just going to clip through the wall here. If we just press B. Yeah, see it drops that. Oh god. It just drops that. So then, let's come back here. And we go to the wheel. And we go here. And then we want to empty tank, lower, we just want to, uh, we just want to drop it. I, I would love to see something on the, the menu, I'm not able to see it anywhere, but I would love to see something on the menu to tell us what implement we have assigned so we know what we want to pick up and what we want to drop, so we'll drop that. Eventually, alright, and we'll pull forward, and then does that drop this now? No, it drops the weight. So how do we select this? And when we do select it, how do we know that we selected it? Unknown at this point. I don't know how that's done. All right, so we'll turn this back on. All right, and uh, let's just park this thing up. Right over here somewhere. Fried, I have to say, it does look a lot better clean. I I don't really mind a dirty tractor. I don't care. As long as it still works properly. But I have to admit, that looks better clean. All right, and then we will, uh, let's go back in here. Set the brake. Engine is off. Open the door. All right. Hop out. Oh, that's so much nicer with the track IR turned off when we're out of the vehicle. Nice detail. All right. So before we go inside, we'll take a look at these fields. And just sort of, uh, I think they're all the same as far as fertilizer. So we can just sort of, right? So that one's a little, a little hot. And then we've got that one. We've got that one. That one. These three are almost identical. And the BBCH. Okay, I'm sorry. BBCH is zero for all of them. Okay. So we'll go in the house, we'll sleep for 10 days. You know what, we don't even need to go in the house. We can do it right here. We can do it right here. Uh, so we want to sleep for 10 days and zero hours. Uh, no, let me take that back. We're gonna sleep for 10 days and 14 hours and that will make it eight in the morning, seven in the morning. There we go, all right, ready, here we go. All right, don't lock up on me. All 
All right. Wait for the game to something, something. Why can we, uh, we can turn, but we can't, we can't walk. What's, what's happening here? There we go. All right. Very strange. All right. So the rental period is over. I'm looking up here. Uh, that stuff has been returned. Our sprayer that we left down at the water treatment plant, that's all been returned. So let's get rid of these, clear those out. Right. And then if we look back at our fields, let's see how we're doing. All right. So we're at 20%. Interesting. And then as far as our fertilizer goes, we're at 130, we want to be at 150. We're at 91, we want to be at 76. And we're at 169, we want to be at 160. So we're, we're pretty close on all of these. The only thing we're low on, we're low on nitrogen. And then in this field, we're low on potassium. Mm. How low do we want to get though? Like at what point is it worth fertilizing? You know what I mean? Do we want to mess with this now? Or do we want to sleep another 10 days and see how we're doing? Let's, uh, let's sleep another 10 days. I don't want to fertilize, you know what I mean, five times during the year. Uh, although, didn't somebody tell me in stream they did what, like six days? Oh, something. All right. Uh, so we go here. We're going to sleep another 10 days. Here we go. And I can hear it raining on and off as we're sleeping. So I think we are getting some water on the crops. All right. And we go back here. Let's see how we're doing. 26. And this is, this is still 160 for potassium, 90 for phosphate, and the nitrogen seems to be coming down for all of these. Okay. So nitrogen's good there. That's good. And then this one does need potassium. All right. I'm going 10 more days. I keep hitting the wrong button. I'm going 10 more days, and then that will be one-third of the growth cycle, and we will fertilize. And then we'll go another third and see how we do. And I think we are going to harvest today. This first year, this first season, we'll just call this a, I don't know, a test. All right. How we doing? Uh, right here. 30%. Or, well, it's not a percentage, but 30 on the BBCH. We're at 152 for potassium. So that's a little bit lower now. And nitrogen is definitely, I think that needs to be addressed. So that nitrogen is low. That. Yep. These three fields need nitrogen. This one needs potassium. All right, let's focus on these first. We're at 153, I'm sorry, 112 kilograms per hectare of nitrogen. We need to be at 150. So we need 40, 40 kilograms per hectare of nitrogen. Let's do it. So go in here. Get stuck on the door. All right. So we go right down here, and we're going to need to use pellet. Uh, let's bump this up so we, just so we can see it. And we want that one. And we need. 40, we said. Forty. So we need to spread 150 kilograms per hectare. When we look here, we have a total of 0.35 and 0.45. Uh, call that seven eight. That's eight. One point five. Yep. One point five hectares at 150, so we need another 75, so 225, so we need 225 kilograms of N27. All right, here we go. Fried. Uh, man, one of these days I'm going to be able to watch one of these streams, but I'm working right now. Hey, no problem, man. You can see it on the replay. We're here almost every day. 
It's all good. So, oh yeah, there's our lights. So we will go down to, we'll go down to the store first, the implement store. We'll lease the spreader. Lease it, uh, maybe we'll buy it. Oh, and you know what? I keep forgetting this. We don't even have to go down there. We don't even have to go down there. We can go right here. And the dealer. And how much is one of these things? Like 25 grand? Forty-seven grand. Uh uh. Right. And then we'll <laughs> and then we'll lease it. We only need it for a few hours. Uh let's say four hours. Yep, four hours. 360 euro less than 48,000 euro. And we want to go uh, to the farm. 500 bucks to have it delivered? Fine. All right. So we get out of there. And where is this thing now? We had it delivered, but where to? I got to go third person until we find it. Do we know where things get delivered when we have them dropped off at the farm? Sir? Uh, is it in one of the buildings? Uh, where is it? in there? Nope. Over here? All right, I give up. <laughs> when you have the equipment dealer, Drop something off at the farm. Where do they put it? All right, let's do this. Let's go back in here. I have no idea where this thing is. I hope it didn't spawn into a wall or something. That would be no good. Not there. Not there. Oh, uh, here. All right, I give up. We're going to recover it. To right here. So if we go here, fleet. What? Well, <laughs> well, that's why we can't see it. It didn't. Oh, you know what? I don't think I hit the button. All right, we're figuring it out. So deliver to the farm. Rent. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. Found it. I forgot to hit the button the first time. And then it spawned it more or less on my head. All right. Hey, man, it's a Friday and it's 2020. Anything goes. Expectations are very low. I just want to make it through this year in one piece. All right. Get this closed. Break is off. Here we go. And I already forgot. What is it? It's 225 kilograms of N27. That's it. All right. So we get back up here. I'm 
it by like so. Beautiful. And head down to uh, down to the co-op, not the harbor, the co-op. All right. Uh, the game does seem to be playing a little faster. I didn't see anything in the notes about them optimizing, but frame rate is really good right now. I'm liking the gear stick movement. I don't know how I feel about having a hand. I know people are sort of hot and cold about that, right? Like right now we can't see our own body. We can't see our own legs. And some people are okay with that because if you're going to make legs, like what are they going to look like? Are they going to look like my legs, somebody else's legs? And other people are like, please put some legs in there. That's really unnerving, right? Like put some arms and legs in, put a hand on the gear stick. I'm, it's not that big a deal to me. I do like seeing the gear stick move, but it is a little off-putting that our body doesn't exist. But yeah, the game seems to be running just fine. And the, the little things that they're bringing in, some of that stuff, it strikes me as things that they wanted to have on day one. And it's just going to take a minute to get everything sorted. But not a big deal. I have to say, as, as frustrating as Early Access was, I am nothing but pleased with this game. Very carefully pull out here. Now, I think if you were using a wheel and a, a wheel and a shifter with an H pattern on it, I think that would be very satisfying to see the gear stick move as you went through the gears. And like I said, we are there was a patch. I think we are unpacking some textures, so you may see a little bit of a little bit of tile loading and freezing, but for the most part the game has not been doing that lately. Yeah, agreed. It's really uh, it seems like a great idea, but I think it's very easy to to do it wrong. And I think in a farming game, because in a racing game, really all you see is the end of the gloves, you know. But in a in a game like this, you would see your legs, right? What kind of pants you're wearing? You got boots on, gloves, sleeves. I mean, you would see quite a bit of your arm. I mean, I guess if we go out here, we can see our guy, right? So I guess you could just use those clothes. But I don't know. I mean, it's not. It's not that big a deal. I'm not, I don't really have feelings about it either way in this particular sim. I feel like, um, I mean, I know I've made this comparison before, but I feel like in the same way that something like Forza is really, really visually striking, but it's not the most accurate racing game. And it's not intended to be, it's not trying to be. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you have something like R Factor, which is not a very good looking race sim, but it is extremely accurate. I feel like for a while now we've had a really good looking farm sim that was in comparison not super accurate. And now we've got a farm sim that may not look great, but it just has so many layers of, of uh, depth and detail in the actual mechanics of farming that I'm not really noticing the visuals. I mean, I wouldn't mind if they tuned them up. But in the meantime, I'm not, I'm not tore up about it at all. It doesn't bother me at all. Oh, and I did see, right, so you know all my, all my trucks in Truck Sim, all my aircraft, or most of my aircraft in my flight simulators, uh, the cars that I drive in iRacing, I try to sponsor everything with one consistent brand, right? We brand everything. So I thought, why don't we brand the tractors in cattle and crops, right? <laughs> and I think I understand why there are so few mods. If I'm understanding this correctly, you need to, like you personally need to get a copy of C4 Tombstone if you want to make mods for this game. And there was supposed to be, let's get loaded up here and then we'll, continue on this topic. So we'll set the brake and we want, what did we say, 200 and 225 liters of N27. 
225. I don't think we can do, yep, I don't think we can do 225. We'll go 240. All right, I hope this is right. There we go. So yeah, if I'm understanding it correctly, you need to license that for yourself. And there was supposed to be, I've seen this in a couple different places, there was supposed to be a map editor and uh, a vehicle editor included with the game. Like there's Giants editor, which is not really included. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything, but it's not included with Farm Sim. But apparently their editor was gonna be like in the game or part of the game, I don't know. But I haven't been able to find it anywhere, so that could be one of those things that they've moved back to a later date. But as it stands right now, if I wanted to paint one of these tractors, I would have to license C4 Tombstone from Terrathon. Is it Terrathon? Tetrathon? Mm. The company that makes the C4 engine. I would have to license it from them. And I've seen prices anywhere from 100 to 350 bucks. And it's not even, it's unavailable at the moment. It's not going to be available until 2021. Yeah, I'm not entirely clear on that whether I've been whether I've been getting accurate information or not, but that's what I was able to find from their social media streams. So yeah, I don't know if I want to spend a minimum of a hundred bucks to be able to unpack the file with the images in it so I can do some painting, you know, and put my corporate color on this tractor. So that could explain why there are so few mods for the game at the moment. And again, that's that's one of those that's one <laughs> that's one of those live and learn things. When you license an engine as a developer, when you license an engine, you're on board for better or for worse. You are using that engine now because once you build a game for it, right? It's not like a year or two later you can say, "Oh, well, we we've made a mistake. We don't want to use this engine anymore. We'll just recode the entire sim for another engine." You're locked in. So I think you need to be really careful up front about what engine it is you license and what the what the long-term working relationship with that company is going to be like. But as much as sims like this depend on modding, I think that could be and as always, you know, that's just my opinion. But I think that could be a big mistake. Games like this need mods. And this game really does not have very many at the moment. So we'll see how it all plays out. But tractors are not getting painted. That's the takeaway. <laughs> and there's that, you can see it just a little bit, but it, it's... It almost looks sometimes like the like the game is not uh, like it's moving the whole the whole camera by degree rather than smoothly, right? Like it's moving in five degree increments. It kind of jumps to the left and right. Yeah, and I, I mean, great. I mean, now I now I own C four. What else am I going to do with it? I already painted my tractor. Now what? So it's a, essentially I'm, I'm left to ask, is it worth $100 to paint this tractor? And at the moment, no. I noticed that about Flight Simulator, the new one that just came out. It is unbelievably difficult to skin aircraft. And I really think in 2020, the way that we play games and sims, I really think that almost needs to be, character building is, it's a really big deal. People love to build their characters in video games. And in, a, in an FPS game, you want to you know, put on certain clothes and put certain skins on your weapons and all that sort of stuff. And in a driving game, you want to paint your vehicles, uh, whether they're aircraft or trucks or tractors. So I think that's kind of an oversight on their part that, well, I can't say that it's an oversight. Again, I don't know, but it it certainly seems like something that I would want to have in a, a farm sim on day one is the ability for people to quickly build good mods that are going to make people want to play my game. And of course, I forgot to remember the number. I want to say we're at 
40 kilograms per hectare, but I'm just going to double check. This is important. 40 kilograms per hectare. Yes, we are. Okay. So now we go back out here. I'm, I'm starting to get the hang of this. I really am. It's, it's becoming more and more familiar, and it's starting to make more and more sense. So let us go do the two fields that we know we can cover in one pass, right? Because we are going to be making some tracks in these fields. Break is off, and we want to go, uh, let's just flip around. Yep. And we'll start with field 13, 40 kilograms per hectare. And I'm going to check before and after just to confirm that our values alter in the way that we want them to. Did I miss my turn? Oh no, here it is. So we'll go right in here and then right over here. Beautiful. All right, so this is carefully is our first barley field yeah I can see some I can see some high spots and low spots that you know, let's set the break and go third person here reset there <laughs> there it goes yeah I can definitely see some areas where oh you know what I wonder I wonder hang on let's go back in here let's do a walk around yeah brakes are on So you remember when our worker was getting this field going and they were sort of driving back and forth here? Now we did hit this with a cultivator, but I wonder if this low spot here is a result of compaction because our worker drove back and forth across this part of the field so many times when they were making their turns. And if we go here, do we get the field analysis tool? No, I think that's only for grass and hay. I'm pressing B on my gamepad and it's not giving me any field info. I think that only works on grass fields. Okay. All right, I had to do something right quick, but we're rolling again and we will, we'll do one pass on this. I think we're gonna crush the crop under the tires, but then we will have tram lines from here on out in this field if we need to fertilize it again back into the tractor close that like that and we want to let's set this up first we want 40 can we go that low I hope we can Ooh, 25 or 50 uh, we'll say 50 this field has been kind of you know what I mean going through a lot of nitrogen so we'll do this and did we go uh, was it 24 meters. So we go here and like this and then like this. That's 24 right there. So we'll go a little bit more. And this field is just a little bit, it's, I don't know, it's just a little bit of a trapezoid. All right, I believe that is just about everything. So we'll say 30, right? We'll go there, we'll go here, back here, and set this to 30. All right, break is off. I'm gonna stay third person for this first pass just till we see how this goes. Right. Okay, so our volume is dropping in the menu, so we are spreading fertilizer. And we're we're driving over the crops. We're not crushing it. Interesting. Is that a is that a thing in real life in farming? I would have thought we would be smashing these little plants down into the mud.
Alright, easy enough. Now, I have a question. That was at, we'll, we'll go back and take a look at these. 50 kilograms per hectare, and we wanted 40 kilograms per hectare, right? And we barely used any. We had, what, 240 in there. We used 18 liters? That doesn't seem right. Let's take a look on this menu and see what we got for, that was field, uh, field 13? It's this one right here. What in the world? That barely went up at all. Uh, eight. Mm, what is happening right now? So it did say we wanted to go from, we were at like 110. We wanted to be at 150. So we set our spread rate to 40 kilograms per hectare, but it only did 10. All right. I'm going to, I don't want to drive back across this field, although I guess we can because it didn't, I mean, you can see some, yeah, you can see a little disturbance there. So let's just drive back in the tracks we just made. Something seems to be wrong right now. We want it 50 kilograms per hectare. And that is on 50 kilograms per hectare. The spread is good. The speed is good. What is, what's the missing piece right here? Why does this seem to be applying so slowly? All right. And then like that. I mean, I, I guess as long as we drive on our own tracks, we're okay. You know, because we're not... We're not destroying any more crop on the second pass than we did on the first pass. I'm just really curious why, even though the rate, like on paper, it's correct, but it doesn't seem to be getting to the field the way we want it to. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll just go one step at a time here and try to figure it out. So if this is consistent, we'll be at 130 now. Break, go back here. Fields owned right here and right here. Yeah, I mean, it's slowly coming up. But I guess, uh, yeah. Something's wrong. Okay, so if we're getting 10 per pass and we want to be at 150, then we can move this rate from 50 to 100, and one more pass will put us at 150. And then we can use that same... That same number for... Oh, no, we'd, we'd need to be... Hang on, I gotta do more head math here. All right, so let's get this done. If one pass added 10%, and this pass were double, so it's gonna add 20%, total of three passes will be 40%, which is what we want. Then if we double the rate again for the next field and make one pass, that will be 40%. So we'll have to bump it up to 200 liters per hectare. I don't know why the math is not adding up. I'm very confused, but I think we're figuring it out. All right, I'm going to drive all the way to the edge of the field here. And then stop. Okay, so we set the brake. Go here, here, and here. And we're now, we're a little over. We're at 158. And we want to be at 
150 so we're not we're not spot on but close enough and then I'm gonna bump this now from 100 to 175 yeah all right and we'll do this next field And I want to say the width on this is about the whoa field guidance. I want to say the width on this field is about the same as the one we just did. So we just need to more or less turn this 90 degrees. And we can do that right here. We'll set the brake, open this, and we want to turn it 90 degrees. Doesn't matter. 90 degrees it that way. Slide it over a little bit. Like so. Is that about right? We'll take one more look here. We're going to be in this field now. We're at 108, and in one pass, we want to try to be at 150. All right, here we go. I still haven't figured out where we went wrong. Or, I mean, I, I'm reluctant to blame anything on a bug until I know it's a bug, but... When we looked on the fertilizer calculator in the house, it did say 40 kilograms per hectare. And that's what we have this set to, or it's what we, it's what we did have it set to. Fusion, I think it adjusts automatically, which I think is a thing in real life, that the speed of the vehicle determines how fast it flings it out. I could be wrong about that. Take a look. So if we go here now, field 13, yep, that took us to 154, and we want 150. Okay, so our, our speed is right, our rate is right I just for the life of me I do not know why uh, we had to almost quadruple it to get the number we wanted but whatever we figured it out so let's get up here to this next field and oh try to <laughs> I'm trying to remember from the last time we used this spreader what width we went with I, I think we may be okay with what we've got on here. Yeah, I think this might be about right. So we'll put this right here. We're in the trees, right? And then we open this. Uh, so we want to set that like that. And then we need to rotate a little bit, slide it over a little bit. I don't know if we'll ever have any type of a, a field dimension measurement. I mean, I know we can see the, the, the area of it, but I'd like to be able to see how wide it is, how long it is, that sort of stuff. Let me get that right in there. And I know this doesn't need to be neurotically perfect. I think pretty close is close enough. All right, there's that. And you know, if anything, maybe missing some fertilizer on some parts of these fields would give us an opportunity when we harvest to see how it affects everything. You know what I mean? If we know that there are certain parts of the field that we missed, let's see how it looks when we come back to harvest, what those areas that we missed look like. All right. And here. And here we go. So 
So you can't see, it's very faint, but you can see kind of a disturbed area in the crop. I don't know if that's just sort of temporarily folded over and it'll pop back up or if when we come back in 30 days that'll be completely dead and those will be our tram lines. Unknown at this point. Yeah, and then there's a little kind of a low spot down here. I mean, I like it. I like the, the detail that the fields don't grow completely consistently. All right. I'll get up around here. Yeah, this will be pretty close to two passes. So we'll go right in there. Cruise control on. Turn on the spreader. And I think at the moment we're out of places to store fertilizer because of both of our stalls in the barn, both of our fertilizer stalls have something in them. And I would guess you can't add a third fill type, right? Or if, there, if there's one fill type per slot, you can't add a second one in a slot. So I think we might be out of luck on that. And I don't know any other place to empty this thing. I mean, we're close. We got our volume just about right. Oh, look at that. And it did, I don't know if you saw that, but it did stop applying fertilizer after we left the field. So it only, Ah, moment. This is pretty hokey what we're about to do right here. But apparently it only applies fertilizer when you're over a part of the field that can receive it. So if we go here, this may be a way to get rid of this last, last little bit that's in there. Nope, it's not letting anything come out of the, the spreader probably because we're not technically in a field. Okay. So you can you can cheese it a little bit but not a lot. That's fair. So we'll set the brake. Let's take a look here. So this is 150 now, 158 and 156. Okay. So all of our numbers, I mean they're not they're not perfect, but they're in the neighborhood. And now this one over here is the one we need to add some potassium to. 50 kilograms per hectare of potassium. And let's get this turned off first. And we gotta figure out how to get this out of the spreader. So we can, we can try to put this in one of our stalls in here, but I don't think it's gonna let us do it. we can try. Didn't even give us a trigger for it. Okay. So when when there is something in those other stalls, it seems like... Oh, you know what? Hang on. Why is this thing still on? <laughs> I thought I turned that off. Let's try it again with the spreader turned off. It's, it, it's possible that when there's something in those stalls that doesn't even give you the menu? I don't know, let's find out. Could be because I had it turned on. Nope. Okay. So when there's a fill type in each of the fertilizer slots in the barn, it doesn't even give you the option to do anything else. So we've got, uh, got a choice now. We can either sleep another 30 days and apply more nitrogen with what we have in here and let the potassium get too low in that one field or we can drop this spreader, lease another one, 
and spread the potassium. Uh, you know what? I'm going to call it a test year. Let's sleep for another 30 days and see how our chemistry is. All right. Set the brake engine off. Let's go up here. And I'm just going to make it 30 days this time instead of 10. 30, approximately 30. Give me 30. There it is. All right. And let's see how we do. All right. This is an interesting process. I mean, it makes me think that they, there is some, some code being configured as that's all going on, rather than just bringing it forward to like a generic next stage or something. All right, so if we go here now, where are we at? Oh, all right. So we need, wow, all right. We need. Mm. Definitely should have sorted out that potassium. I think this field is just about lost, but we can maybe save these other three. Okay, so we need uh, 80, 30, and I will call it 120. So 80, 30, 120. So that would be one to four. That would be, uh, I mean, if we made it 90, 30, 120, that would be 314. Is there a 314? Let's go take a look. Yeah, I think field 16 is lost. We needed to address that potassium rather than just, you know what I mean? A, sort of abandoning it for the summer. Okay. And we can... Oh, that's right. We, we cannot. We can apply two fertilizers, but we cannot mix them in the hopper because they spread at different rates. Okay, so we want we want a 314 approximately. Uh, what did we say? We need to be... So... Uh, well, let's say 80. 80, 30, 120. Okay. So if we go in here now, we want to be at uh, 80, 30, so uh, 80, 30, no. Um, nope. I think we're going to need to do these separately. Although this one... 30 and 120 is what we said, right? That gets us 30 and 90. I mean, this would be the most, I guess, the most efficient. And I think we even have some of this. So we would want to go... Bring this open one more time. This is surprisingly complicated. All right. Uh, say 80 and then 30. Okay, so 80, come back. Eighty. Yep. So we'll start with this 201010. Oh no, we can't. Never mind, we can't because we don't. We don't have any way to spread it, so we need to go with the N36 again. So we'll take this back to 80. So 220 kilograms per hectare. One and a half would be 330, and we have barely any in there. Okay, so we're going to the store. We're getting 330 liters of the nitrogen. Let's see if we can save these fields. And then field 16, uh, well, let's, before we go down there, because if we need to add this one, this needs nitrogen as well. Um, uh, 
80, yeah, so, uh, so, it's 7, so, 1.85 hectares, get this number again someone's gonna come up with a mod where you can have this like on a on a palm right uh, 1.8 we 396 liters we'll go 400 okay So we'll know for next time not to let a field go for 60 days. And I'm curious if the different crops consume different chemistry in different amounts. And I guess it's different uh, at different times of year as well. So early in the year, they may need more nitrogen. And then later in the year, they may need more potassium. We're still good on fuel, right? Yep, fuel is still good. Okay. 400 liters of nitrogen. I mean, they, they look okay, right? As we're looking out here at field 16, it looks okay. I don't know what that means in real life, but they seem to be all right. Get over there. Get over there. If we are calling this a test year, then what we'll do is, after we get done with this fertilizing, then we'll go ahead and lease a uh, combine harvester and bring these fields in and see what kind of volume we get. And then next year, next year we'll know what we're doing a little bit better. here carefully and what time is it it is two o'clock for me all right been going about one hour And rather than getting 400 kilograms, I think I'm going to get about 375 because we've got a little bit in here. Wait a minute. Moment. <laughs> that thing was on lease. Fortunately, we're right up the street from the store. I'm glad I saw that before we got all the way to the co-op. I mean, I guess that's one way. Oh, I didn't even think of that. I did not even think of that. So when we were at the farm, we calculated based on the fact that there was still nitrogen in the spreader, but we didn't have the spreader anymore. It got returned when the rental time ran out. So we could have, yeah, we'll, we'll figure this out. I think there's just a lot more to remember than I'm used to. You know, some of this is kind of all new. So we'll pull up over here. Whoa, easy. Let's just calm down. Pull up right here. And we want to go uh, here. And then right here. 
I think four hours worked fine. We only used it for about 20 minutes. So just to be safe. All right, four hours. There we go. Beautiful. All right. Back to the co-op. Also, uh, does it seem like there's not a lot of traffic? Is that because it's early in the morning? Or does that have something to do with the patch? Let's see if the traffic picks up later in the day. I'm hardly seeing any. I saw some people walking, I remember, when we were leaving the co-op last time. There's a car. All right. Yeah, I don't know if the traffic is on a schedule where there are heavier and lighter times during the day. I want to see as the years go by if we if we determine there's a fertilizer that we use a lot of every year I would say we could go ahead and get a whole trailer full of it and bring it up and dump it in the barn so we don't have to drive down here multiple times during the summer all right Set the break and we want uh, is it the N27? Yep. N27, and w what did we say? 400? Is that right? And we want to go 200 liters. Mm, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling all right about this year, but not great. Not great. I feel like I made some mistakes somewhere along the line, and I, I'm not 100% clear where. But we'll get better at this. It's all new. All right, break is off. Here we go. And we need to wait till the, is it the BBCH? We need to wait till that value is at 90, I think. That's the earliest you can harvest. Or does it have to be a full 100?
Aiden, what's happening? How's Friday treating you? Not too bad. Not too bad. It's been a pretty good week. I'm really looking forward to the weekend, though. I w I'm, I'm ready to start it right now. You know what I mean? Two in the afternoon is a little bit early for me to start my Friday, but I'm ready. All right, so we'll make our turn here. Uh, oh, you know what? I also just noticed the trees have all come in. Uh, the trees were bare in the spring when we first went to sleep and it is midsummer now and the trees are all filled in interesting oh you know what the trees are filled in and our frame rate is not is no different with all this all these leaves on the trees our frame rate is still uh, mid 50s right now all right that's uh that's some good optimizing all right and what was our our field guidance was set to 30 meters was it not so we'll need to remember to reset our spreader to 30 meters and then we're going to be at 200 kilograms per hectare all right fusion you know what the more i play this game the more i wonder like who it's for and i don't mean that in a bad way but i mean it is so um it's so specific it's so detailed all right uh so let's set the brake we'll turn this back on that is still set to 30 so we're good there and is the side to side still set oh you know what we need to uh why can't i see it why can't I see my marks? It's happening right now. All right, let's do this first. So if we go here, we want this to 200. We want this to 30, right? 30, I said, there we go. That is good. That's why I can't see it. <laughs> All right, so let's get this centered. Get this centered, and the field is just a little bit ir irregular. So it does, at that end, it's just a bit off. All right, auto track on. Take a look at our numbers one last time. So we can see what we do. Uh, we want to go here. And our nitrogen is at 73 right now. We want it at 150. So we want to get 80 kilograms per hectare of on there. Of, of on there. But you know what I mean. 70 kilograms per hectare on there. Yeah, this is, this is really unnerving because I feel like this needs to be... Yeah, th this feels wrong. All right, uh, I'm just gonna just gonna hope for the best here. Try to center this a little bit more. All right, there's our speed, and there's our sprayer. Interesting that we are not uh, that we're not crushing the crop. I'll have to take a look in the patch notes. I've seen that happening until now, so I'm curious why that's not happening at all. I, I was really, I was kind of looking forward to trim lines. Maybe we're not going to get them. Or perhaps it's just not in this crop. Unknown.
Oh yeah, you know what? You're right. If they added that, hang on. Good eye. Let's see. Uh, let's see if they added that gameplay. Vehicle player debug. Uh, I don't see it there. Difficulty maybe. Gearbox. Um. Nope. Don't see it there. Okay. All right, so let's take a look here and see. Oh, fingers crossed. 123. You know what? Uh, I'll take it. At the moment, I'll take it. I don't want to get too fancy because I feel like if we try to fix too many things too quickly in these fields... I feel like something's going to go horribly wrong. And I'm really not 100% even sure of what I'm doing right now. So yeah, I don't want to I don't want to go absolutely buck wild and try to uh, you know what I mean? Somebody told me yesterday the secret to a burrito is less is more and I've been thinking about that since then. All right, uh, so we want to go here. We want to Rotate 90 degrees. We want to bump that a little bit that way and then slide a little bit this way. Yeah, I think less is more might be the way to go on this. I mean, it's going to mean more passes, but fuel isn't that expensive and we're not that busy yet. We don't have enough fields at the moment that we need to really be worried about running out of time. So I think... I think we would do better to make more passes with less chemistry than to try to do everything in one pass and, and cause ourselves massive problems. Oh, you know what? I just noticed something. Hang on. Let's go in here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the crops don't come through the floor of the tractor. I love it. You know what I'm talking about. If you're living that farm sim life, you know what I'm talking about. All right. So we'll get all the way up out of this field. We'll stop there. Set the brake. And then let's take a look. All right, we were at like 70, we're at 120 now. Okay, 123, 120, 68. Okay, so we'll do this other field. And then, I mean, we may end up making a couple more trips down to the co-op, but I'm okay with it. Better or worse than Farm Simulator? It's it's very different. I really like it. And I, honestly, I haven't played Farming Simulator. I mean, I was not on FS19. I was on 17. I got off 19 um, after eight months or so of release and went back to 17. First time I've ever done that with a title. Hang on. Let's do this. I was seeing if we could just kind of sticky our way across, but it, it's really fighting me. Uh, Farming Simulator is the first time I've ever gone back in a franchise and not played the newest one. And the thing that I like about 17 is it does have mods like more realistic. And seasons, of course. I mean, I know 19 has seasons as well, but those are the, the mods that I play with and try to make the game as realistic as possible. And I feel like this sim has a lot of that stuff uh, on board, but more so than Farming Simulator does. Like you see what we're doing with the chemistry now. I've never, well, obviously I've never had to do this in Farm Sim, even using the old soil mod in FS15. So it's really just a, a different take on it, on farming. 
can't really see that it's kind of over there yeah hiding behind the tree it's a different take on farming it's a lot more of the mechanics of farming and it's got the soil deformation it's got um, the soft terrain so it's it's definitely a, a different sim and I'm really enjoying it I have to say where is our I'm gonna back up just a little bit so we get lined up here proper there we go oh we're already lined up okay now I wouldn't want to say better or worse your mileage may vary but for me it's it's just a whole different experience and I'm really really liking it Oh, and you know what? I just realized something. You do have to reset the field guidance lines manually. So if you don't have tram, li tram lines to drive in, I, I just realized like how tricky it is to try to go back through the same marks that you were just in. Because we missed that one by a mile. <laughs> okay. So I am going to turn this off before we try to make our turn. All right, and then back here, right there. If I can find it, there it is. And then like that. And then we spray. Okay, and it looks like the spreader doesn't kick on until the tractor itself is within the field boundary. So that little triangle back there behind us, I think that is unfertilized because the sprayer didn't activate on our first, the, when we did our first spray back in the spring. It did not spray that area because the sprayer doesn't turn on until the wheels of the tractor are inside the field boundary. I think that's what I just saw. And then it turns off, if you look at the counter, I didn't turn it off, but it's no longer spreading. Okay. So let's get this turned off first. get rid of that and then we'll go back and take a look at this One eighteen. so we could mm -hmm. all right here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go hit field 16 with nitrogen until this spreader is empty and then we're gonna make a calculation and see if there's a second fertilizer we can apply just to these three fields up here that will get our numbers where we need them to be And field 16, like I said, I think it's, I don't want to say it's a lost cause, but I think field 16, we screwed up. I screwed up by not getting that potassium on there in time. Oh, and you know what? All of our streams till now, we've tried to stay first person, and I've completely gotten out of that habit since we started this episode earlier this afternoon so get back in here and for width uh, hmm well <laughs> gotta go third person again moment let's go out here so if we bring this up, like that, like that, reset that, uh, we're going to rotate, about like that, slide it over, and I think, 
I think we can do two passes on this field as we did on the one up by the barn, uh, by the cattle barn. I think we can do two passes and call it good. So right about there, turn that on. Like so. And like so. Okay. So yeah, I think the trick of this game, as your farm grows and as it gets more and more uh, difficult to manage, for lack of a better word, I think the trick is going to be that you do everything as efficiently as possible. So what we're doing right now, like making multiple passes with fertilizer and, right, it's not that big a deal now because we have four small fields and we're just sort of experimenting. But if we were playing the game for real, trying to make money, uh, and I mean, I am, I am playing it realistically, but I'm also sort of learning it. But if I was playing it for real and trying to make money, the goal would be that we would make as few passes as possible, that we would make as few trips to the store as possible, you know, that sort of thing. So right now we're being very, very inefficient and it doesn't matter. But if it did matter, turn that off. Oh, we'd be losing money right now. Or not making as much money as we could, not making money as fast as we could. So I think the trick is gonna be uh, efficiency. And it looks like, yeah, the there's kind of a, an odd boundary on this field. So down from the other end, it looked like we'd be going way off to the side, but from here, we're starting almost exactly in the center. Okay. So right there, and I did start down at this end again, because had we started at the other end, our sprayer would not have activated straight away. So we do that, and then like that, and then like that, and there we go, we're spraying, okay. And ideally, we run out of fertilizer just at the end of this field. And then we can refill this with something else. That's why I went a little bit light down at the co-op. I didn't fill this broadcast spreader all the way because I actually want to run out so that we can put something else in it. And if it still had even a little bit left in it, we wouldn't be able to do that. And unfortunately, it looks like it's going to have just a little bit left in it. Damn it! All right. Uh, now what? <laughs> Let's take a look at our take a look at our fields here. Field 16 is yeah. These are all more or less at 120 now for nitrogen, and then these are 40 and 40, give or take, for phosphate and potassium, and then this one is 30 for phosphate and virtually no potassium. So we'll worry about this one last. Let's do these next. Uh, can we, I don't know if we can unload what we have. Yeah, I don't know what to do about what's in there. It's like we need to get it out of there, but I don't know how. Uh, there's nowhere to dump it. If we go here, empty tank. How long's that been there? Okay, that was easy. Back to the barn, we'll do another calculation, we'll head back to the co-op. Okay, so that feature's there. I mean, it wastes it, but I think the total value, it was like $200 for 400, or 200 euro for 400 kilograms. So that's a dollar, a dollar twice now. A euro for two kilograms, so 10 kilograms would be five euros. So, okay, we didn't lose a ton of money there. All right. Let's 
set the break. Let's go in here. There, we'll leave the door open and we need to calculate one pass that we can make on the three fields at the top of the hill. One pass that we can make to get those other values where we need them. So if we go in here, and if we go here, we need 30 and 120. So 3 to 12 would be 1 to 4. All right. 1 to 4. Uh, what did we say? 40 to 120? Uh, okay. <laughs> I'll take it. Let's double check one more time. We need, it was one to four, so we need, well, 30 to 120. So let's back this down a little bit or split the difference, say 35. 35 would be 35 to 105, that's pretty close. So 500 kilograms per hectare of 721, and we have, uh, if we count these three, 1.5, 1.05, so it's one and a half hectares for those three. So we need 750 liters. 750 liters, 500 kilograms per hectare. You know what I'm gonna do before I forget? I'm gonna set our spread rate before we go down there because I always forget it later. So if we go in here, close that, and we want right here, 500, okay. And we're gonna leave our, our spread width the same. There we go. 500 kilograms of 721. I hadn't even thought earlier on the field guidance that every time you get to that field, if you've reset your field guidance by going to another field and setting it for that one, when you come back to the first one, the tram lines are not gonna line up. So what we'll do is we'll get these fields, we'll get done fertilizing these fields, and then I'm going to have a combine harvester and a small header sent up to the farm, and we will do our first harvest. It's a test, you know, it's not going to be, I know the yield is not going to be great, but we'll do a test, we'll bring these crops in and we'll see where we go from here. Because really, I mean, if we lease the combine harvester, the only thing that we would need to buy or want to buy would be the spreader that we have on here right now. But when I think about the difference between a few hundred euro for a few hours versus 50,000 euro right, to own this thing, we do use it, but I don't know that we use it 50,000 euro worth. So I think we'll continue to, to lease this. And beyond that, we just have the implements that we have in the barn. We've got our drill, a power harrow, a disc harrow, a cultivator, and a plow. And we really don't even need all of those. We could sell some of those. But let's say we keep all that. We've still got 250 grand. I'd like to buy a little trailer. That's something it's good to own rather than lease. But yeah, I don't think we need to spend a whole lot more money other than to buy fields. And we had a uh, we had a worker. I don't know if we still do. I don't know if we're still paying her every month.
Now there's withering in Farming Simulator. And I'm guessing, as realistic as this sim is, I'm guessing there is something similar. But I don't know when it happens or how progressive it is or like what kind of warnings we get. I do think with the season being so much longer, with the year being a full 365 days in this sim rather than being broken down into quarters, I think we would get a lot more warning. It would be a lot more progressive rather than farm sim where you just wake up one day in seasons and all your crops are gone. I think it would be, I'm guessing, but I think it would be a little bit more progressive. And what did we say? 500 kilograms of 721. I try to drive as well as I can, but the AI traffic sometimes when they see you, they just absolutely go berserk and like mount the curb and do everything they can to get out of your way. All right. 500 liters. 721. Set the brake. Uh, 721. 500 liters. This is really tricky with the thumbstick. We'll go 510. We'll go 510 now that we know we can dump it. In fact, Go 540. Now that we know we can dump it, we'll go 540. And once we get these three sorted, I mean, I guess we'll just kind of hope for the best on field 16. Aiden, I want to say there's about... 30 pieces? Let me pull up out of the trigger and I'll bring up the menu. So this is it on the left side. Uh, there's two cloths, a little one and a big one. There is a forage harvester. This telehandler is a mod. Uh, there's a combine harvester, Tucano. Sprayers, there's a Deutzfar 7 series. And the MB track that we're in this New Holland is uh, mod. Sorry, I like blanked out for a minute. It's a Friday, man. I'm tired. So, yeah, I'd say, um, I don't know. 30 pieces, 25, 30 pieces. All right, break is off, here we go. There is mod support for this game, but oh, don't kill the rabbit. There is mod support for this game, but at the moment there are really not a lot of mods at all. And I sort of think I know the reason for that, but, but you know, you never really know anything on the internet. You, the best you can do is sort of, I don't know, take an educated guess. But from what I found with C4 and Tombstone, it seems to be... Uh, that you really need to want to make a mod for this game at the moment. And now if they come out with their editor later, maybe it will be easier. But it seems like for now it's kind of a kind of a big deal to make a mod and that's why there seem to be so few, if I had to guess. And I have no idea how long it's going to be until there are mod maps. I suspect that with the AI traffic splines, these maps are very, very difficult to make. 
I mean, they look graphically, visually, they, they may not look like a lot, but I think technically there's a lot going on in these maps or in this map. And if you wanted to make a mod map and have it include all the features and functions of the sim, there would need to be a, a pretty robust uh, underpinning to that map. So who knows when we'll see good mod content for it. But in the meantime, I'm certainly, uh, this map is not, to me, it's not played out at all. But technically, realistically, I haven't even learned the game yet. I'm still figuring out like what I'm doing. So I'm in that uh, exploring phase. All right. right. This way. Last stream, somebody told me this is a very authentically German looking map. But this is very true to life for this part of the world. Personally, I'm kind of used to small British and UK and Irish style maps. A lot tighter, uh, very reduced sight lines, a lot of hedgerows and walls. So this is really spread out to me. But I do like the look of it. Good on traffic. All right, here we go. Let's go right in here. Right over here. See how our math is. Right about there. Set the brake. All right. Reset. So if we take a look now. Back to fields. If we take a look here. We want this to be 40 and 120. This is all right. Okay, so we'll turn this on, turn this on, reset this. Then slide this over. I would really love to have a press and hold on some of this stuff. <laughs> There's a lot of tapping. Liam, what is happening? How's Friday the 13th treating you, my man? Steering is on, right? Brake is off. Cruise control. Sprayer is on. And we are sprayering. I know at some point, as I'm playing this sim, I know at some point I'm going to do a pass like this with fertilizer, and when I come out the other end of it and look at the menu, it's going to say like 1,200 liters per hectare. The field is going to be on fire, right? <laughs> it's going to be a disaster. And then you just plow it under and start again. Although I don't know, if you were to scorch a field like that and just go absolutely buck wild with the fertilizer, I don't know how long it would take for it to sort itself out. I don't know how many years it would take for that to balance, right? If it was a rainy year and some of that chemistry were to leach out of the field, would you be okay the following year? Or is, it, is that field just out of commission for a while? All right, set the brake. Take a look. Wrong menu. Take a look. <laughs> and we want to go field 15. All right, that's not bad at all. We want to be at 76. We're at 75.8. We want to be at 160. We're at 140. You know what? I'll take it. I will take it. Because that, yeah. Keep in mind, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. That's pretty close. The gold standard is going to be, not just for me, but for anybody, I think the gold standard is going to be when you can get your chemistry exactly where you want it in one pass. And I think that would be a goal for a real-life farmer as well. All right, keep the hours off the machines. Don't waste a lot of fuel. 
All right, and then we open this up. Rotate 90 degrees. We need to uh, kind of center this a little bit better. Not quite there, right about there. Does that look about right? About like so. Pretty good, pretty good. All right. And then we turn the cruise control on. Take the brake off. Spreader is on, here we go. So we'll get these three fields done. Yeah, yeah, I think at least a year, but I don't know, I mean, depending on how, depending on how things uh, work their way down through the soil as it rains, one year, maybe two years. I mean, the cheese thing to do would be to sell the field in game and just let it be somebody else's problem. But in real life, well, I don't know. In real life, you'd probably get sued if you did something like that. Sell a farmer a field they can't grow anything in without telling them. The game does seem to have a tremendous amount of detail. Just ignore the fact that we're sliding. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> For the most part, tremendous amount of detail. Still a work in progress. All right, so we'll turn that off, and we're going to head over to our other field, and then I think these three will be done. And we can just do what we can to save field 16, and then we'll sleep another 30 days. And we've been going uh, not quite two hours, so we'll get a harvest started. We'll lease a combine harvester and get a harvest started and see how we do on that. And we'll just call this first year a test. Something that I did notice, I feel like the fertilizer they really want you to use is the bull slurry. The problem is, here's your problem. You gotta have bulls if you want that. Uh, or, or do you? No, didn't we? Yeah, didn't we realize that you could buy that down at the harbor? Stand by. Uh, yes, yes. Is it here? Full slurry from the Harbor Slurry Trader. Yes, you can buy it. Okay, I feel like that's the fertilizer they want you to use. It's got a really good balance. That uh, is it. Two one two. I don't know. It seemed to. It seemed to be like a, like a almost a default fertilizer. I could be wrong about that, and I and I know the fields will be different from year to year, based on what crops you grow in them. Right? They'll always have slightly different chemistry, but I feel like that bull fertilizer that bull slurry is uh i feel like that's good stuff and it's really really inexpensive i'm going to slide this over a little bit more right about in there somewhere right about there all right break is off break is off Cruise control. Spreader is on. Here we go. Liam, have you had an opportunity to read through the, the uh, notes from the update or spend any time in the sim yet? One more pass here. All right, on. Let me know how your frame rate is. I, I feel like I picked up a few FPS. Yeah, this little triangle right there. So even though the spreader is on, it's not spreading yet, not yet, and then it comes on right there. So I think that little triangle is an area that just doesn't get fertilized. 
uh, because the sprayer is not on yet. And we went, ah, oh, we went a little bit light. We just ran out. We just ran out of fertilizer right there. Oh no. Okay, it's a test year. It's a test year. In the future, I will. Now that we know we can just dump whatever's in this spreader, in the future I'll, I'll always go a little bit heavy, right? Because the the amount that we lose is just a few euro, but I would not want to run out. And I think now when we look at this field, so we'll go here first, get rid of this, get rid of that. And now when we look at this one particular field, we're going to see that the top of it is a little bit unbalanced. Is it this one? Yep, it's this one. So when we look like right here, yep, did not get the top of it. Okay, I mean, we did pretty good. So uh, field 13, we want to be at 150, 76, and 160. We're at 120, 76, and 140. Uh, Pretty good, pretty good. This one we need uh, 30, 40, and 160. I don't think we can do that in one pass. I don't even think we can do that in several passes. I think we've made a mess of field 16. All right, so we're gonna come right over here, come to a sliding stop. Set the brake, engine off, top out. All right. So I would say because the potassium is, there's virtually none, I think that potassium value can be anything we want it to be, either high or low. So if we go here, right, what we need is Field 16, uh, so we want 30, 40, anything, okay? So if we go here, um, nah, I think this is, this is no good. Uh, so this would be, no, this is no good. Nope. 30, 40, anything we want. 30. Nope. 30, 40. Um, this could work. So if we, if we got the nitrogen sorted, right? And then other passes for Phosphate and potassium. Oh, okay, Aiden, is that like GPS driven? I've been watching a lot of New Holland videos and they have these unbelievable like GPS controlled systems where you can go out and like measure the chemistry in your field with these little plugs and you put that all into the GPS and then when you go back over it with like a boom sprayer, it is constantly adjusting the nozzles up and down. So it's fertilizing like different square meters of field in different amounts in real time. Unbelievable. All right. So if we do this one, 30, 30, and 30, right, on field 16, then our nitrogen would be good. Our phosphate would be nearly good. And our potassium is so messed up that we could just come back in with one more pass on that. So this is a possibility. Okay, this is a possibility for now. Don't have that, don't have that. Nope. No. Yep, I think this is the one. Okay, so we need, it's only for that one field and that field's volume is, wow, volume, area is 0.64. So 0.64 of 200 would be uh, 128. 
We're gonna go 140. We're gonna go 140 on 15, 15, 15. And then we're gonna spray it at 200 kilograms per hectare. So let's set that up first. We'll, we'll go hop in and immediately set that to, forgot already. What do we say? 128, we're gonna go 140, 140 and 200, all right. So we'll set the, the rate to 200 and then we'll go buy 140 kilograms of 15, 15, 15. Okay. So get this closed. And we want this to, uh, what do we say, 200. Security cameras look like you're playing a five-bit game. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, 140 kilograms of 15, 15, 15. Okay. Oh, uh, hang on. I don't think this is possible, but before we make this trip, take a look at something. You can't buy this stuff and have it delivered, can you? No. Okay. That would, <laughs> that would certainly alter the complexity of the game if you could just have consumables delivered to your farm. Okay, well we will, let me see, this will get our nitrogen and our phosphate close to sorted. And then we'll need to go uh, get one last spray of potassium. Is that right? Yeah. And that'll be, I think that'll be it. And then we can sleep another month. And when we wake up, we can lease our combine harvester and see what we get for volume with this crop. Okay. Yeah, I, I will say this every episode because I think about it every episode, but I am really impressed with how the devs brought this game around from the state that it was in in early access they have really, uh, I mean, if I had not heard any history of this game, if I was not involved with the Kickstarter and I just saw it, right, for the first time, I would be absolutely blown away. And it's a shame. I mean, that's true in, in life in general, first impressions and all that sort of thing. But the idea that you have about something can really determine how you feel about it, even if the thing itself is evolving. And this game has most definitely evolved in a very positive direction since the early access. And I'm happy to be wrong about it. I had more or less given up, but this is a very impressive sim. And I think there's still a ways to go with it. You know, if, if anything, one of the advantages of having a game don't take this the wrong way, but one of the advantages of having a game that doesn't look that good is it doesn't age, you know? It, it didn't look that good to begin with, so it doesn't really go downhill. You know, if you have a an absolutely state-of-the-art, cutting-edge game, ray tracing, subsurface scattering, right, all that stuff, in a couple of years, it doesn't look as good as it did on day one. But if your game doesn't look good on day one anyway, then uh, that's not even a thing. But this is, to me, this is not a visual game. This is, uh, this game is all about the mechanics of farming. And I think they are gonna continue to improve it and add features to the game. Uh, even the, the uh, deep loosening, you know, realizing that the deep loosening at the moment is not in the game. So I'm assuming they plan to put a ripper in of some kind or a subsoiler or something and I'm guessing that's not the only thing they plan on adding. Uh, I know people wanted multiplayer. That was supposed to be in day one. Didn't make it for day one. But people want, uh, they want multiplayer. I would love to see an editor uh, so we could more easily edit the maps. But FS19 <laughs> is an example, I would say, of how that can go wrong. I mean, for me, the best system would have been if there was a light 
kind of a light port. I know you couldn't do this on console, but if they were able to somehow port the Giants editor in game, it wouldn't need to be full featured, but just a, a very basic version of Giants editor in game. And you could do things like place buildings or move trees, right? And then when everything is good, you hit save. And if you, if you put a tree somewhere and you don't like where it ended up, you just control Z. And because of console, that's not a possibility. I get it. But, you know, the fact that we don't have an editor in this game at the moment, I would rather they, they wait and release it later than do what Giants did and... What do we want? 15, 15, 15. Do what Giants did and put the, uh, the terrain editor in FS19 and have it be really kind of a... I, I don't think a very good feature. We want... We want 140. I'm going to go 180. Like I said, our what are we spending here? So that's about two euro per liter. I think we're going to have about 30 liters left over. So 60 euro. I'll take it. I don't like wasting money, but it's it's a small amount. And now that we know we can dump this thing out in our neighbor's backyard, you know what I mean? We can go a little bit heavy and and never worry about running out. All right, here we go. Yeah, I've been so careful about traffic in this game. I honestly don't even know off the top of my head if there is collision on traffic. Or if we can drive right through the AI cars. I mean, I don't want to get in the habit of doing that. And this rabbit is... reckless. <laughs> I don't want to get in the habit of doing that. I always try to drive well. I mean, I know I'm driving way too fast for a tractor. And taking these turns way too fast but I, I try to drive somewhat realistically and I would not want to get in the habit of just disregarding AI okay now is that is your FPS do you think your FPS is a little better than it was before the update or about the same And diff locks, definitely. I think, honestly, I think diff locks is from people getting stuck in that field during the one tutorial. Oh, I didn't even see that. So you can map individual gear ratios? Or do you just mean you can assign different gears in a with an H shifter? Diff locks is key, though. I'm super happy about that. I didn't want them to dumb down the mud. You know, it's a huge feature of the game. It, it's it been, from day one, that has been, you know, that, that a farm simulator could have terrain like Mud Runner. That's been a big deal. I did not want to see them dumb down the mud and, and more or less take it out. Okay, maybe a little better. Yeah. The biggest drop that I see is, like, when I was doing the last couple scenarios, and it's meant to be autumn and autumn, all the fields have crops in them like literally every single field has crop in it my fps was a mess and the game felt really uh really stuttery too it, it was like 20 to 30 fps but not smooth because 30 fps I mean, people have been playing 30 fps on console for several years now and as long as it's smooth it doesn't look bad but when it gets kind of kind of jerky and micro freezes that's when it's really immersion breaking Oh, you can map. Okay, so you can map the gears to the gates on a shifter. All right, now we don't need to go all the way up the hill. We can just go right over here to. Is that no? It's the next one up. We can go right over here to field sixteen. Now I played. Farming Simulator 17 in cab a few times. I never tried it with Track IR. I've tried it in cab a few times, and I just always preferred it third person. This is exactly the opposite. I really do prefer this first person. Okay, so you do have an option for a transfer case on a stick, or the transfer case still has to be on a button? This is us right here.
If I was to start building a wish list for this game, one thing would be that you could set up the field guidance system per field, right? And have that on a little USB, little USB drive in your pocket. Although in fairness, right? In fairness, this tractor doesn't have GPS. You could probably get a, I don't know, some kind of a strap on unit, but you know what I mean. All right, so we go here and we wanna go here and then here and then here, right? And then like this. Yep, two items on my wish list that you could lock these in per field and that there was a press and hold on this rather than a tap. Can't switch between ranges, okay. Yeah, because you know the way people build sim rigs for <laughs> people that take their sim way too seriously, like those people that build $100,000 race rigs, right? You know somebody's built like a full tractor cockpit and they've got two or three gear sticks that they can use for transmission, transfer case, shuttle, whatever. You know what? If I had enough space and enough disposable income, I probably would. I'll admit it. Uh, yeah, this looks about right. And we're only gonna have to do this. We need to make these two passes and then we're gonna fill this thing up one more time for potassium and then we're done. Yeah, exactly. Well, the nice thing is, the nice thing is, if you don't want to be married, just go ahead and, and build you a $100,000 game cave, right? And then all of a sudden you're not married anymore. Fantastic. All right, let's just double check everything. Let's just calm down. I'm getting in a hurry. Let's check everything, 180, 200, 30. All right, I think, I think we're good. Here we go. Now, the worst possible scenario would be you build your game cave, right? Your significant other divorces you, and then they end up with the game cave. They get it in the settlement, right? So now you got nothing. Now you're single, and you got no game cave. Where are you going to go to distract yourself? Nowhere. Your game cave is gone. Well, I mean, it's not gone. It's just you can't go there anymore. Somebody else is there. So what I got in the habit of doing is I drive out to the edge of the field and I wait for the sprayer to stop and then I turn it off. And that way I know we're past the part of the field where we could miss anything. So we're gonna turn that off, turn that off. And I'm gonna drive back around to the first edge of the field so that our sprayer turns on as soon as we cross over the boundary. Because if we did it here, that angle would kind of throw everything off. We can even go in here now because we got this set up. All right. I think that's about right. Yep. That is right. Okay. So if we go here, turn that on. All right. Good there. Right, and then turn that on. There we go. Yeah, I'm really noticing. I feel like all the areas where we didn't spray consistently or where we had too much compaction or where we didn't, you know, just all the things we did as we were prepping these fields. And you really can see, I mean, obviously right there, you can see a difference in how the crops grow. It's a nice little detail. And it's certainly, uh, it's gonna be a nice feeling when I finally get it right. And we have, at the end of the year, we have a field that is just 100% bumper crop from one side of the field to the other. 
All right. So that is done spraying. So we'll turn that off. Let's get off here so our wheel can stop. There we go. So let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Off camera, I'm going to go into the barn and empty out those two fertilizer silos. Well, no, I guess there's no reason to do that. I was going to empty them out. Empty? There we go. I was going to empty them out so we had a place to put fertilizer. But then I realized we don't have any fertilizer to, to put in there because now we know how to get rid of what we don't need when we're done with the field. Oh, hang on. Before we go any further... Take a look and see how we did on our estimate. Right there, field 16. We wanted to be at 150, we're at 151. We wanted to be at 76, we're at 63. Not bad, so now we need to add 130 kilograms per hectare of potassium. And we may have, we may have saved this field. I'm not 100% confident, but maybe we'll get something out of it, I don't know. Yeah, I'd like to see that. It's a little bit immersion breaking to have the lines going across the field. I wouldn't mind. I mean, I don't know how those work in real life. I know some of them actually control the wheel, right? They're servos under the hood that turn the wheel for you. But I think a little display in cab where you had to just kind of line up the arrows. For me, that would be more immersive rather than having the lines on the field. It's not a deal breaker, but... Anything to make a game more immersive, I'll take it. All right. I'm gonna stop right here. Engine off, set the brake. Let's hop on out of here. Leave the door open, we're just going inside for a minute. And what did we say? We need 130 kilograms per hectare of potassium. So this will be, I wouldn't say easy, but that's what we want right there. We want 130. So we want, and that field is, where's my calculator? That field is 0.63. So we want, go back here, 0.63 times 220. We need 140 liters of K60, and we need to spread it at 220 kilograms per hectare, or 200, close enough. All right. Oh, nice. <laughs> Someone's going to make a mod for that, and whether, I mean, if it's displayed in cab, that would be fantastic, but as long as we get it somehow. All right, I'm going to save that number. How many liters in a kilogram? Depends on the mass. I learned that in science. Uh, 220 kilograms per hectare. I think every fill type in the game has a different mass. So they're all going to have different weights per liter. All right, um, get this closed. And then we wanna go here, and what did we say, 220? Can we go 220? We can go 225, okay. Uh, isn't there a conversion in there? Hang on, going back inside. <laughs> Is that one what went wrong when we did field 13 when our spread was so low? Is it's, Am I not converting liters to kilograms? So this is all kilogram. This is kilogram. Is it not? This is kilogram, but then we buy it by the liter? Hang on. Oh, you know what? 
I think the only place we see both displays Aiden, I think most of these games do have uh, in-game coordinates. They wouldn't be the same as the real-life GPS coordinates. But I think you can... Like, that's how in-game GPS works, is there are uh, X and Y coordinates. But I think if you could access that in the game code... Uh, if you could access that in the game code, you might be able to... Uh, well, I mean, if you were a modder, that would be how I would do it yep Liam when we get down to when we get down to the co-op I think we'll be able to see both kilograms and liters and I think that's the only place you can I didn't see it in the calculator anywhere I didn't see it in the menu anywhere oh going so fast and uh, now when we put when we put a fill type in the spreader, then we'll see it down there to the uh, lower right as well, down in the HUD. So I, I think, I mean, I want to say it's like apples to apples that we're, we're buying kilograms, we're setting the sprayer for kilograms, and we're basing our calculations on kilograms, but it could be that a liter snuck in there. And if the masses are all different, then that would have thrown everything off. Very carefully pull out here. The closer I get to the end of a stream, the more I worry about doing something terrible. You know what I mean? <laughs> like flipping the tractor into a river or something. What a terrible way to end a stream. I think the first time I streamed ever, I streamed SnowRunner, and there was nobody. <laughs> There was literally nobody watching. And I just, I was having like, I've rolled a truck. So I teleported to another truck to go rescue it. Then I rolled that truck. And then I got another truck to rescue the first two. And I rolled that one. And I didn't quite rage quit, but I mean, it was just me. There was nobody there. So I just stopped the stream and went into my control panel on YouTube and deleted it. Like it never happened. You saw nothing. I wasn't even here that day. I didn't roll any trucks. But ever since then, I've been very, I don't know. It's just not a cool way to end a stream. I always try to end on a high note. All right, let's so we'll turn right in here. Oh, a little wide. And I also have to figure out, do, I don't think there are hours on these vehicles. I don't think there's maintenance, right? Where every 150 hours or 1,000 hours or whatever, you need to have the engine rebuilt. It'd be a nice feature if they added that. I would take it. But I don't think accelerating time to like 5X is going to mess with fuel economy or anything like that. But I just want to confirm that. And also... Uh, what we have to pay our workers. All right, so if we can see a worker working, we know how fast they're going, but I don't know what we're paying them. All right, so if a field takes, I don't know, 30 minutes of real time, and our worker takes 30 minutes to do that field in real time, but we have the game time on 5x, did we just pay them for two and a half hours? Or did we pay them for 30 minutes? It's not that big a deal, I'm just curious. So before we start accelerating time, I want to have all that figured out. And also uh, fuel. Fuel's not terribly expensive, but I don't, I don't want our fuel bill to go up by 500%. All right. We need, uh, what was it? Uh, Which one was it? Was it K60? Yeah, it's K60. And we needed... Um, 
Yep, so Liam right here. Uh, 148 kilograms. Yep, I think that could have thrown us off a little bit because I was going by liters, right, by volume, which is the leftmost number. And then in the middle in parentheses is kilograms, but that's the number we actually want to buy. So the liter volume is really not important when we come down here. What's really important is kilograms. And I think if we, can we bump that over just a little bit more? Nope. Not with the thumbstick. 165, so it goes. All right. So we'll top this off. And I think this will be it for fertilizing. We're going to go back to the house. We're going to sleep for a while. And then we will rent that combine harvester. We're going to rent a combine harvester and buy a trailer. Oh, that's no good. Yep, when you get down to the co-op, you'll see it. It's just in the main menu there. But that is the only place. And if we look down, down below now, in the right-hand side, our sprayer, the only measurement, the only volume we get from that is liters uh, rather than kilograms. Okay, cool. Yep, I mean, and they're pretty close. They're pretty close. And I think they would be... Oh, hey. Anytime I say, okay, cool, my uh, galaxy wakes up, Google wakes up and says, how can I help you? Oh dear, got a bit of a situation here. And we did, we did already, yeah, we reset our spray, our spray volume to uh, 225. Liam, was it you that was telling me you sprayed fertilizer like six times? Because I think this is probably, well, one, two, yeah, this is probably like our 12th trip <laughs> that we've made. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be really critical as we get more fields that we do this in as few steps as possible. Try to be efficient, try to be good fake farmers. And when we sleep now, we've been sleeping 30 days at a time. I think our BBCH is about 75. Now, I don't know if that plateaus or if it's linear. So let's say it's, it's that every stage of BBCH is one day, right? If there's 100, right? Like if we were to sleep for 101 days, when we came back, all our crops would be withered. I don't know. Or does it plateau at... Does it begin to plateau at like 70 or 80 and your crops stay green for the spring and summer and then they, they turn gold and stay that way until you harvest them? I don't know. We will find out. And this, uh, yep, we didn't reset our field guidance so we should be able to just hop right back in these tracks that we left before and fertilizing will be done for the year. Fantastic. All right, traffic looks good. Okay, you know what? That's another way to do it. I hadn't even thought of that. I had not even thought of that. If you, if you were to just get, like fill this thing, right? 3,000 liters of nitrogen, then just go to every field and calculate what you need to put on that field only for nitrogen, then you could just dial in your spread for that field, repeat that for every field until nitrogen is good for everything, go back and dump the rest in the barn. Then go to phosphate, do the same thing. Okay, 
That's that's a different take. Break is set. Uh, let's get this open. Put this over here. Get that right there. And uh, yeah, we're not really centered. Let's get centered a little better here. First two rounds are the most critical. Yeah. I don't know if you were here. Uh, I was about the middle of the stream. But our potassium in this field was was low, and I decided to just risk it. Double check here before we start. Yep, we're good. It was low, but I decided to risk it, and it ended up dropping to, like, zero. So I'm not confident we're going to get really anything out of this field as far as yield. I mean, I know we'll get something, but we could end up with, like, a thousand liters of barley or something ridiculously low. And I did, the potassium was already low, and I let it go for another 30 days. So yeah, I think getting everything exactly where it needs to be before the first time you sleep is going to be the most important thing. And I, next year, I don't know if we're going to sleep 30 days again like we did, because we went 10 days, and that didn't seem like enough, so then we slept 30 days, and when we woke up, everything had gone a little bit sideways all right so we'll come off guidance steering head down to the other end of the field here we go and something I have not explored yet is having a worker fertilize and I'm guessing you need to dial in all these values all right, that you need to pick a worker first, that you need to tell them what equipment to be on, right? And that you also need to tell them what field to be in, what fertilizer to spread, how wide, right, all that stuff. I'm guessing. Turn around here. All right. Field guidance. Turn that on. That's on. All right. Let's see how we do here. You know, it's funny, when things sort of went off the rails for us was before we fertilized the first time, because what we wanted to use, like the perfect numbers for us were the bull slurry. And we even rented the, the big uh, slurry spreader. We just couldn't find any. And I didn't know about that blue menu that tells you what the different commodity levels are. Uh, not commodity, consumables. The different consumables on the map. I didn't know you could see where everything was in that blue menu, but had I known, we would not have driven all over the map. Well, had I known, <laughs> we would have just, let's get this open, we would have just uh, gone down to the harbor and bought bull slurry down there. But I think that would have been the perfect uh, proportion, I guess. Oh, you know what, we can get rid of this too. So in the future, we'll do that. Break is off, break is off. But I think that would have started us off for the season better. It's like we got a little bit out of sync on our different chemistries, and then everything just continually like spiraled. But we're figuring it out. I mean, it is, in fairness, it is a pretty complicated game. And there is, this, is, this has got to be the most math that I've done uh, in any game in a long, long time. All right, so we'll take one more look at everything, and then we're going to sleep again, and we will, uh, when we come back, we'll get that combine harvester up here. All right, so we'll stop right here. Turn that off. All right, hop out here. 
that what hop out here. Why is that flashlight turning on? What is happening? All right, don't need the flashlight. Okay, so if we go here now, field 16, how are we looking? Not bad. 150, it's exactly where we want to be. We're at 63 of 76. Not bad. And we're at 165 of 160. Also not bad. And this is 71. So let's let's sleep for 25 days. Let's sleep for 20 days. Because I don't want to uh, come back and have everything all burned up. Withered. I could do this with the mouse. Uh, there's 21 days. All right. Cargo received. What is that? I just saw some things flashing up in the corner there. Did we get cargo? Hmm. Cargo purchased. XP received. Okay. What date am I at? It is now, uh, looks like late June. Rental period. So that's gone. XP. XP. I love XP. Payday. I don't think we got paid. I think that is, we still have an employee on the books. Uh, would that be here? Staff. Yep. Asta. We've been paying Asta all summer. She did one thing for us like three months ago. All right. Uh, let us take a look at our crops. All right, numbers are still pretty good. And yeah, numbers are actually still really good. And then the other one would be, well, I say really good, like I know, but I mean, they're certainly not as unmanageable as they were earlier. All right. Okay, so we need to be at 90 to harvest. Is that correct? Let's sleep another five days and see how we do. It's impossible with the gamepad. There we go. Sleep another five days. All blurry. Uh, I mean, OBS says we're at 1080p60. All right. Uh, let's go back in here. Simon, we are fantastic. How's Friday treating you? Field 16. Uh, still at 89. Let's see, about 13. 90. Okay, so it does seem to plateau. Oh, it's your internet? Okay. Okay, I thought that there was something wrong with the stream. So it does seem to plateau. It seems like it went up quite a bit earlier. And... What? Oh, God. That's that, that's that stick drift. I got to set my dead zones a little higher. We've been wandering across the barn the whole time we've been in the menus. All right. Let's get back over here. So we'll sleep another. Uh... Oh, yeah, that's a pretty golden looking crop. Let's sleep another uh, five days. I think everything needs to be over 90. But it is all gold right now. Uh, and that sounds like, is it, it's cloudy, it's not raining. So that's still 90, 90, 89, 89, um, short growth time, about 100 days. You know what, I'm going to go five more days and then we have to harvest. I don't want this stuff to start withering. Western Shore V2, I'm really looking forward to it. And it's going to be nice to, uh, having stepped away from Farming Simulator 17 for a few weeks now at least, it's going to be nice to hop back into it, particularly on a map that good. Okay, these are all 
at 89. I'm sorry, these are all at 90 except for 16, which is at 89. I'm going to risk it. Let's see how this works. So we're going to buy, right? We're going to buy a trailer, right? Have it delivered to the farm. And I just noticed, I just noticed <laughs> that we were, even though we were in menu, when I was moving the stick in menu, it started moving us in real life. So I'm gonna come over here now, and when we start wandering, as we do, we're just gonna go over and bump into the trailer and we won't wander off into the woods. All right, so then we go back here and we need to lease a combine harvester and we're going to lease this for let's say four hours oh i mean that's better than 350 grand to buy it but that is still pretty spendy 1500 we're going to have it delivered to the farm rent that yes all right and we also need a header for it only one width of header that beautiful okay so I'm going to I don't think we need to worry about carting I think the tank on this thing is not going to fill up on any of these fields so I'm not going to worry about carting let's get this open hop right up in here get that closed Right, and uh, let's go third person for this. Like I said, it's been a good stream. And I don't want, I don't want the wheels to come off <laughs> just as we get toward the end here. So we will head over and uh, just do these fields one at a time and see what kind of volume we're getting out of them. The vehicle spawn in this game, I have to say, I hope they work on it a little bit, because down at the down at the store, everything just sort of drops in a lump. It's a little bit cumbersome to get things sorted out, right? Like we're not super realistic here as far as the angle, but there's only so much I can do. All right, that's pretty good. All right. So that unfolds everything. It does. The vehicles do ha have a really nice, what I would describe as a really nice weight. They really feel, uh, it feels like you're driving something. It's well done. I think they put a lot of uh, thought into the physics in the game. Okay. Are we all set? I think we are. All right. So, like so, and like so. Here we go. Okay, so it is letting us harvest. I was concerned about that, that our BBCH would not be appropriate, and this would have to be harvested like as a... Uh, a green whole crop, but it is letting us harvest. I mean, I don't have any basis of comparison at the moment, but we seem to be doing okay so far. I mean, we might not be at a thousand liters by the end of this single length, but we'll be close. I call that a win. And I don't know, uh, so this field, this is uh, spring barley. I put in the first thing that, that we had an opportunity to plant. I just wanted to get something in the ground. So 
So this chap that it's throwing out, uh, well, you know what? It's so uh, it's so comprehensive. I was thinking of the uh, uh, is it the green manure mod? Chop straw from Farming Simulator. If you have the chop straw mod, when you throw chap, it counts as a layer of fertilizer. But that's a a very different fertilizer model. It's really just level one, level two, and level three versus specific uh, specific chemistry that this sim has. So I don't know that the, the chaff we're spreading would count as any fertilizer at all. It may. I don't know. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't I don't have any, I mean, I haven't done this before, so I don't know if what we're getting out of this field right now, I don't know if this is a good number, bad number, uh, unknown. I'd like to see uh, some type of a farm tablet added where you could put in things like field dimensions or like what volume we're going to get out of this field this year. It, it may track that. I'll take a look in some of the menus. It may track that automatically. But to be able to see that you know, year one we got 8,000 liters of barley out of this field and year two we got you know, X thousand liters of corn and just begin to get a feel for what a good year is versus a not so good year. I mean this seems not bad, doesn't seem bad so far. I think field 16 is going to be the kind of the deciding factor as to whether or not we figured any of this out our first first attempt. All right. Back here. And over this way. Oh, we can do this as well. Well, as intimidating and as overwhelming as the game is when you first fire it up, uh, it does, if you go through the tutorials and just kind of take your time and, I don't know, be comfortable making mistakes, it does, or at least for me, it did eventually begin to click and make sense. And I have, a, I think, a pretty good understanding of what it is we're meant to do in the game, you know, what our goals are and how we'll go about making those things happen. But this is, whether they intended it this way or not, I have to say this is a, a pretty satisfying feeling after all the things we did to get these fields ready and how long it took. You know, I'm never, <laughs> I'm never down on uh, the Farm Simulator franchise, except for 19. 19 is not my favorite, but the Farming Simulator franchise, no problems with that at all. But it can seem like you're painting fields. And this does not feel like painting fields. Hang on. We're going to skip to the next song. I don't know what was going on there. Not a fan of the auto-tune. It does not feel like we're painting fields. It feels like we are really doing something in this sim. So being able to harvest a crop at all is, uh, yeah, there's definitely a feeling of accomplishment. When I saw those numbers for field 16, after the second time we slept, I was concerned that we had absolutely destroyed the crop. And you know something else that I really like about cattle and crops is that you can skip days and weeks at a time. And I think with them having a full 365 day calendar year, I think that was a necessity. 
because I know with seasons, uh, even even on like 24 day seasons, there was a lot of, I don't know, just kind of speeding through the day as quickly as possible, turn the time compression up to like 360 and then go back to the farmhouse and sleep and do the same thing again the next day. It's really nice to be able to just burn through the entire day. without having to go to the farmhouse. I just noticed something. What is this? Is that... What? <laughs> is that new? This is a base game combine harvester. Is that new? Has that always been there? Oh, wait. What? That's fantastic. I love it. Now I'm curious, uh, we don't own a Kloss tractor. I'm curious if that is like present in anything else. Uh, game is full of surprises, I love it. So yeah, the time skip feature, because when we're done with this, I don't think we need to really worry about anything else until spring of next year when we start prepping fields. Uh, is there, are there winter crops? Is it too late in the year to put in a winter crop? Oh. This little camera, uh, this just made my day. <laughs> I don't know how long that's been there. I would think that if it had already been there, I would have noticed it, but no guarantees on that. I'm kind of a doofus sometimes. I miss things like that. But yeah, that's a that's a very cool little feature. Right, and we are we're about half full, so I think we'll be able to get this entire field in the tank. And then I'm going to uh, we'll probably drive this thing back up the hill. It is part of the latest update. Okay, cool. <laughs> I had no idea, I had no idea if it had been there the whole time, and I just never noticed it. All right, lift that. Frame rate's a little, we got a little bit of chug right now, I have to say. Not terrible. We're still at 30 FPS, but it's stuttering a little bit. It's not as smooth as it has been. It's because we're near uh, crops in the field. That's been sort of the, like the weak spot of this sim from day one is it, it looks great until there are crops in the field. And for a farming simulator, that's a pretty big deal. All right. Yep, I think we'll be able to get this whole field in the tank. It sounds like they may have dialed back the, uh, the interior noise level on this a little bit. I seem to remember it being a little bit louder, but don't quote me on that. I mean, and if they did, it's gonna be just kind of a minor, you know what I mean? Just a minor little tweak within a patch. So the last update before this one, okay. That's when we were, that's when we were working on field prep and fertilizing. So would not have seen the interior of a, of a combine, all right. Yeah, this is just really working for me right now. It's hard to describe it. It just, um, you know, for having spent so many years in a franchise by one developer to be in a sim developed by another developer, developed by another developer, you know what I mean. A different sim, a different franchise, to be in a different franchise where we're doing the same thing, right? We're, we're simulating farming It's just a, it's, it almost feels odd 
because for years now, the, really the only way to Sim Farm has been in that specific franchise, right? That specific sort of venue. And this is an entirely different take on it. All right. So we'll head up the hill here. I think this is our last length. What are we doing on time? Um, yeah, coming up on three hours. Okay, Man, time flies. So we'll go get this unloaded and, uh, and we'll call it. I'll probably, yeah, I'll do these other fields off camera. And then next episode we will, I'll leave it, I'll leave the time where it is. It's uh, early July. So then next episode, we'll, it'll still be July. We'll decide what we want to do as far as going to the following year, whether we want to plant a winter crop or do field prep, figure out what we want to do. All right, so we can turn this off now. Turn this off. Turn this off. And then we want to uh, extend the pipe. And is that our other camera. Yep. <laughs> I love it. All right. So I'm just going to pull up here in the yard somewhere. And we'll go hop in the MB track, hook up that little trailer, bring it over under the pipe and get unloaded. And what's our volume here? 6,471. So if we go here, what are they paying for Bartley? Uh, cooperative sell. Bartley straw grain trader. 575, I'm sorry, 0 0.575 euro per kilogram. So that would be, go back to our calculator here. Just to keep the math simple, we'll say 7,000.575. So about 12 grand, am I reading that right? 7,000 liters, oh, that can't be right. 7,000 liters. There we go, that's better. So about four grand for what's in here. So that would be two grand for our other fields because they're each about half the size of this one. So that would be four, two, and two. That would be eight. And then field 16, let's say three. So 11,000, ooh, that's, that's not exactly, I mean, I, I don't think it's a, a bad year, but you know what I mean? It's not a million euro for silage like we're used to, but it's realistic. And that's what we've been wanting for a long time. So I will take it. All right, get this open. Right there. Right up in here. Right. Break is off. Uh, where's this thing? Right here. Right. Is that about right? Hope so. All right. Uh, 
not so much. All right, we'll just back this thing up a little bit since we need to hop up in here anyway. And you know what? We can try out our new camera. So if we do this and then this, oh, look at that. Fantastic. Oh, are you kidding me? That's so cool. All right, set the brake. And we want to go here now, and then we want to... There we go. I love it. All right. Like that. Hop down out of here. Is that... Is that already empty, or did it stop when I hopped out? Oh. All right, so we need to be in here to get this all the way unloaded. But we'll go third person. So we go here, and then there, and then like that. All right, there you have it. That's our first harvest. We'll see how all the numbers work out, but I think we're going to make about 10 grand. It's going to be very hard to make money in this game, and I think we need to play as... We need to be as intelligent and as efficient as possible if we want to make money. And I also think it's going to require animals. So there you go. All right, I'm going to call it. I will catch up with you. Uh, I don't know. Let's do flight sim tomorrow. I'm going to take Sunday off. And then we'll meet back here for farm sim on Monday. So, yeah, we'll do some flight sim. And I'll figure out what we're going to do in this. But that's it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. A great audience. See you tomorrow.